Alright, so we are introduced to the five families within the set. So, the first family that will be introduced within the set is Obscura family. Their keyword is, no, is known as the Connive or Connive's X. Followed by the Maestro family, which uh, involves with Casualty. Next, the third one would be the Riveteers. Their mechanic would be the Blitz. Followed by the Capiretti, wherein they have the keyword Alliance. And finally, Shield, which is uh, under the Brokers family. So let's discuss first the Connive. So Connive is uh, now a new keyword that's already inclusive within the rules 701.47. So, the knife is under the rule of Rafine, so basically they are within the Obscura faction. They basically manipulate their way to the power, and they help you scheme for the future. So basically what the knife does is that it allows you to draw a, con number, uh, draw a card, then discard those cards, or in, if it's a non-land card that was discarded, you put a plus one plus one on that creature. So, some creatures, most especially like Rafine, would have Connive X. How does that work? So, draw X means that you draw X number of cards. So, you draw each of those cards. Sorry. There's still problems with your presentation. Delay. Vince, you didn't have slide show. Yeah. Shit. Okay, wait. Better. There. Yeah, there you go. Okay, sorry about that. So, where was I? Okay, so for Rafine, it, which has the ability that it connives X, so how does connive X work in terms of, um, uh, in terms of when in normal play or whether if it's sealed format or normal standard play? So connive X is similar to connive, we're in controller will draw X number of cards and then discard X number of cards. So for instance, in Rafine's information, if you have attack with two creatures, you would connive two. So meaning you'll have two draws and then you have to discard two cards at the same time. That's how connive X works in terms for Obscura or for that type of keyword. Knife in this case is considered a triggered ability. Followed by the Maestro. Maestro is Casualty, and Casualty is now part of Rules 702.153. So for Maestro, Casualty is a way of doing business, and to players, it's a cost of casting spells. So if everyone is familiar with the Casualty itself, Casualty is almost similar to two type of things that we have in Magic. One would be Devour and the other one would be exploit. Now are they almost similar to it? For the devour man uh, mechanic, it allows you to get a uh, plus one plus one counter by sacrificing creature. So in uh, exploit, if you sacrifice a creature, you get an additional benefit for it. So it's more leaning on the exploit itself. So how does casualty works? Casualty, most often not. If you would see uh, when cash in a little chat, it has casualty one. You need to sacrifice a creature with at least a power 1 in order to put a copy of that spell in play. I will discuss Obnixilis on another time because that's one of the be basic standard card pieces that is being used nowadays. And yes, it's being used for um, uh, the Chariot and Obnixilis as a combo piece right now. All by Ribbeteers. Blitz is a keyword for Ribbeteers that's under rule 702.152. Uh, Blitz is similar to one mechanic that we have that was introduced during Fate Reforge. Uh, Blitz is similar to Dash, wherein you pay an alternative cost for it. And when you pay the alternative cost for the Blitz for the creature, it has two static effects. So the first static effect, it will provide it with haste, and the other is when you sacrifice this creature at the end of turn. Now, 
once the sacrificed creature is, uh, goes to the graveyard, that's the only time that you draw a card. We'll discuss about the Blitz uh, interaction with some certain cards, notably. Now, with regards to the Blitz, um, so when the creature dies, it doesn't necessarily mean that it just has to be done at the end of turn. It can die as well during the combat, so that's where you would still get to have to draw a face or draw the card itself. So, Blitz still follows the rules for painting alternative costs, which is set in rules 6.6, uh, 6, sorry, which is under rules 601.2b and 601.2f, wherein you pay the alternative costs for the said creature to be in order to play it. And we have the Cabaretti. Alliance is known as a Cabaretti, uh, is a keyword for Cabaretti, and it's now under 2. 07.2c update so this is very a straightforward mechanic wherein every, every time a creature comes into play something happens whether it gets a plus one plus one counter cry or some other details normally this is it's quite different compared to the alliance that we can that we knew during the period of zendikar our uh, zendikar or rise of uh, eldrazi format excuse me and followed by the last uh, family within Capena, that would be the Brokers. They have the me mechanic known as a Shield Counter. And it's a new rule under 122.1c. And it is considered as a replacement effect when it enters the battlefield. Now, we do have an older card that has its own keyword itself that uh, puts Shield Counter in. We'll discuss that shortly with regards to the said uh, update for it. Alright, so there you go. That would be the five family that we have in terms of New Capena. So each of these five families are ruled by a legendary creature that is considered the demon. Followed by, with New Capena, we have a returning mechanic which is known as the Hideaway. This was introduced um, during the popular cycle Lance of Larwin, released back in 2007. So the hideaway now has this new wording wherein uh, when this uh, comes into play, you have hideaway X. Uh, X would be the number. So you look at the top number of cards based on the hideaway, put one of them under the said card itself, then put the rest at the bottom of your library. Now hideaway allows you to cast this card without paying its mana cost once you meet the said requirement itself. So 702.75 A to B gives the update for this one as well as the new definition for Hideaway. Five Larwin Land cycle got updated because of the update on the Hideaway. So this one would provide them with the new information saying that this now they have Hideaway 4. Previously, it's just that when it enters the battlefield, look uh, that comes into play and then look at the so if you would notice, Shell Dock Isle has the old text for Hideaway, whereas the uh, Spine Dock Knoll, which was reprinted, now has the new Hideaway 4. Also, uh, this uh, the sixth card that was also received a new template for the Hideaway would be the one that was printed during Modern Masters 2, which uh, Modern Masters, which is Watcher for Tomorrow. Also, one new rule that we have, which is Equip Planeswalker. This is uh, included in Rule 702.6e. And this is really straightforward. Uh, this is the first equipment that we can now equip the Planeswalker. The only difference in this one is that uh, the Planeswalker can be considered as a creature. So, you can only activate this one as any time uh, you cast Sorcery. This is under Luxurious Guidance Gift. So, I'll be going briefly on some of the comprehensive rules specifically because with the said release of the Secret Lair, uh, with the Secret Lair Stranger Things, we have the interchangeable names. So, some rules update have provided this information, specifically the rules uh, stated, which is a 201.4G. 201.6, 12.1F. This just handles interchangeable names. Actually, 
the interchangeable names was already introduced way back in Ikoria, and it just carried over to the release, most especially the, when we had the recent release of Crimson Vow and Midnight Hunt on this. Uh, some of the cards had interchangeable because we have a tie-in with um, Akilas Wa. So, also, we also have an update with Friends Forever Partner, which only works with uh, Friends Forever and does not work with any other partner ability. So among the examples that we have the interchangeable name, is this would be very crucial because some players, especially since we are going to be transitioning back to face-to-face -to -face tournament, if you are familiar with uh, Ziltara Strength Incarnate, the alternate name is Godzilla King of Monsters. So some players may indicate Godzilla King of Monsters on their deck list. It will still be considered as interchangeable names based on the rules update. Similar as well with Sorin the Mirthless. If the person also writes on their deck list as Count Dracula. And for Stranger Things 11 the Mage, the new counterpart that was released in Nikapena is the silly Haunted Mage. Basically, uh, the only difference between the first two example compared to the last one is that uh, The Stranger Things does not have the interchangeable name at that time. So we just only recently added this one to indicate that the Stranger Things now have a exact copy of a real magic card. Now, also with the, some of the rules update, we have the spells would be put into a graveyard. There are a total of several cards that was written to this one, or transferred into non-functional changes, which affects a total of 15 cards. Among them includes Mission Briefing, and the old text is Exile It Instead. It would be saying that if the spell would be put in the graveyard, exile it instead. So previously, if that card would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. So it was too worthy, so they just kind of shortened it a bit with regards to this rules change in this. Not that too much, but it's more of uh, lessening the words for the said discussion. Now we'll go to some card specific information. Among them includes Denry, Clint, Editor-in-Chief. Uh, when this came out, or this was spoiled initially, uh, it had an old template uh, or a non-standard template. And some people would construe it ambiguously. So they had to do a new template on this one, where the new text will indicate that when this card, in, uh, that when Denry enters in the battlefield, you give your choice of a plus one, plus one, first strike or a vigilance counter on it. Then when e Ever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, under your control, if Denry has counters on it, put the same number of each kind of counter on that creature, meaning it just adds an additional counter on top of Denry itself, as well as on the new creature. I mean, sorry, uh, it means that when the creature enters the battlefield, the new creatures will have the counter uh, that is similar with Denry when it enters the battlefield. So. Initially, it was a little bit um, confusing with it, how it was template or how it was applied, but this time around, it is now cleared up with this said ruling. So let's uh, discuss a couple of things basically. Uh, so um, we kind of gloss over some of the details on this one. So sorry, uh, let's just. My apologies. Um, let's just discuss about the shield counters itself. I forgot to give a clear details. So how shield counters work is that shield counters is sort of like similar to Umbras. Sorry if I have to go back on the shield counters. It's similar to Umbras wherein it gives a semi-protection or invisibility to these creatures. Now the shield counter will only be removed from the said creature. Whenever the creature gets hit by a destruction spell, receives lethal damage, or receives uh, at least a damage. Not necessarily lethal, but at least a damage that would remove the shield counter. So for instance, in this case for Falco, Falco is considered with 3-3. So if Falco was hit with 
a uh, let's say with a uh, stomp or at least a shock since it's not enough to kill falco the shield counter will still drop off because uh the wording for shield counters is, is that it would prevent that damage and then once the damage is prevented the shield counter is removed but that's how the shield counters work casualty on the other hand is that uh, casualty will put a copy of the spell on the stack Sorry, if I'm going back on some of the information because I was not discussing it properly at that time um, so let's proceed with the next slide for this one Let's skip, so with the rules update, we also have an update with regards to redirect damage to the planeswalker. Planes of the Blood Hand was part of this new update as well. Uh, older texts uh, can't be prevented since we had a change with regards to redirection. Uh, now the new text for Flames of the Blood Hand is that it allows you to target either the player or the planeswalker and that damage can't be prevented. And if that player or the placewalker controller would gain life this turn, they gain no life instead. So previously with the Flames of Blood Hand, we just do the redirection previously. And when we had the update with the redirection, this got a, a text, new text update for it as well. All right. This uh, Palliation Accord, uh, if you would remember, uh, if some people would remember it, um, it's an older card that came out during the set of Ravnica and Guilds of Ravnica. This provides a shield counter. Since shield now is a new feature or a new mechanic for Nika Pena, we have to update as well on how Pallion, Palliation Accord works. So previously, Palliation will have a shield counter. In order to avoid the confusion to add a shield counter for Palliation Accord, the new text now reads that we put a palliation counter instead, not as a shield counter, but rather a palliation counter. This would make the palliation accord distinct and separate compared to creatures that would have or would gain shield counters in the uh, in the aftermath itself, whether the creature comes in with a shield counter or if a spell would grant the creature with a shield counter. So that way, this would avoid the confusion between the shield and the palliation accord. So they made this update to make sure that everything is okay on this one. So let us um, go through some scenarios with regards to the Blitz. Because Blitz has always been a interesting situation wherein once you cast a creature, let's use Jaxis. So when we cast Jaxis through its Blitz cost, it gains haste and at the same time when this creature dies, you get to draw a card. So what happened when I cast J Jaxis via Blitz and we have Humility comes into play? Anyone wants to gather a guess on what will happen to Jaxis once Humility comes into play? Yes, a, a, an idea. I think the sacrifice to the beginning of the next instance still happens. Because it's a, it's a delay to the, with the blitz. It's a delay to the with the blitz, yes. I look like that, essentially. Okay. So, but does the Jaxis still have haste? Um, yes, it is. Um, uh, it does. It, wait. Yes. I yeah, just it first, then humility. Yes. Uh, ah, no, uh, humility uh, is in play already. Uh, humility is in play already. Uh, uh, then you cast Jaxis for its blitz cost. Uh, I, I believe it has. I believe it has. Uh, oh, stop me. Uh, no, I don't think it has. Sorry, sorry. It loses all visibility, so no, it doesn't have it. Alright, so yes, uh, that's correct. So, similar to Dash, um, similar to Dash when Humility is in play, if you cast a creature 
the dash uh, mechanic, the delayed trigger will still be there, that it will be bounced on the hand at the end of the turn. Similar to, however, it will not have haste. So similar to Jaxis, it will not have haste once humility is in play. However, the delayed trigger of its being sacrificed at the end of turn will still be there. So next question in that, would you still draw a card once Jaxis leaves play? Or once it hits the graveyard or something? Um, I believe still no, because the, the when this creature dies to a card, it's on the creature since you need to take away the ability, so no, you don't draw. Yes, that's correct. So we no longer have the draw ability itself. So that's what would happen when humility is in play. What happens if dress down is also in play? That's similar to what happens with humility. So if I cast Jaxis via Blitz and someone flashes in dress down, and Jaxis will lose haste and will also lose the ability to draw a card once it's sacrificed, but the delayed trigger will still be there even though if I sacrifice it at the end of turn. Alright, so what happens to creatures with shield counter when these are in play? So for example, let's have Falco, a 3-3. Would there be any interaction between Falco and Panharm and Panharmonicon? Anyone wants to gather a guess with the uh, interaction between Falco and Panhon Panharmonicon? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing the word. Um, anyway. I, would, I would say no, because the Falco, Falco's uh, skill counter enters with it. It is. It does not trigger. It does. It isn't a triggered ability. Uh, Panharmonicon only looks at triggered abilities while Falco comes in with it, not as a triggered ability, but it comes in with it. That's correct. So Falco or the shield ability is more of a replacement effect. So Panharmonicon does not interact with replacement effect. What happened uh, with Yoriok is the same thing. Uh, Yor Yoriok is causing for a triggered ability. Since Falco is still a replacement effect, Yoriok does not double the counter for Falco. What happens if Solemnity is in play? Will Falco still have the shield counter? Anyone? It's okay. No, uh, any guess? Anyone wants to get give a guess between Falco uh, if so Falco is in play and then Solemnity is in play? Will Falco still get a shield counter? In chat. I'm um, not seeing anything on the chat. Okay. Uh, right. JC says yes, uh, Falco will still have a uh, counter on that one. Okay. Uh, anyone else want to gather a guess? If anyone wants to chime in, then a question, please use the Rules Rally channel to answer Vince's question. Oh, sorry, I did not see the question for DJ. I'll get back to you about that, DJ, with regards to um, the delay trigger. Right, so thank you. So for those whose answer that it does not have any counters, yes. Uh, Solemnity, Solemnity still prevents Falco or the shield counter be applied on Falco. Uh, for DJ, um, why is there a delay trigger still there? The delay trigger for cat for blitz is part of the blitz cost. Blitz will have the delay trigger similar to dash, and the delay trigger is part of the cost itself. So when you pay the blitz cost, uh, delay trigger to sacrifice at the end of turn uh, at the end of turn is going to be there. So that's the reason why there would be a delay trigger. So similar still with shield count uh, shield. Shield counter, what happens to the creatures with shield with this said scenario? Would, if there's doubling season in play and Falco comes into play, would Falco have one shield counter or two shield counters? Mm 
Right. Right. So yes, that's correct. Um, doubling season will allow the e token or the counter for the shield counter to be doubled itself, since uh, doubling season allows the counters or tokens to have that double. Next, what happens if uh, evolution sage is in play, or I cast evolution sage in play, and then Falco is already in play, and then I play a land, and I proliferate the shield counter. It can. Right. So, next question on that one. In regards to that, for the shield counters, yes, it can proliferate as well. That's correct. And uh, with the removal of the shield counters, the removal of the shield counters is being removed one at a time for this one. So, say if the, cost, uh, if the said uh, creature, Falco, has two shield counters, and let's say. Uh, Death of God was played, you just only remove one shield counter from it, Falco will still be alive on that. So what happens if, say, Falco with two shield counters is blocked by Aerial Responder? Would the owner of Aerial Responder gain any lifelink? Because prevented the damage. Anyone would like to get a uh, major guess? Owner of the air responder gain any lifelink after blocking Falco. Uh, Nick or YPK says na Falco punch daw siya. Are you okay. are you asking if yung responder may life link pa rin or kung magigain ba ng life yung na ah okay sige sige all right kung magigain lang life yung all right sige sige responder. clear clear medyo iba yung reading ko initially okay all right so would the controller of responder gain any life after blocking falco with the shield counter. And I'm gonna say no because the the the, the instance of damage dealt by area responder is prevented. So since it's prevented there's no life. That's correct. So the damage is prevented so no life gain will be acquired by the owner of area responder. So let's do this. What if it's a vampire nighthawk? It has lifelink and death touch. Let's say Falco has two shield counters. Will two shield counters be removed or just only one shield counter be removed by Falco? Anyone wants to, uh, wants to guess? So, the owner... Uh, player B blocks uh, player A's Falco with the Nighthawk. Would the owner uh, uh, would Falco remove two shield counter or just one shield counter? That's yes, Martin. That's Harvey Birdman. All right, Alvin says just one counter. Anyone want else wants to say anything on that one? Hey. 
So yes, uh, one counter would still be removed. Even though if Vampire and Nighthawk both have uh, Death Touch and Life Link, uh, removing one counter will still prevent the Life Link and prevents also killing Falco from this point. Thus, uh, the owner of Nighthawk will not gain any Life Link or will not gain any life. And Falco will still be alive, even though as two shield counter, only one shield counter would be removed. Okay, what happens? I forgot to add this scenario. What happened if Falco was hit with the? Let's say Falco is at three, is a two two right now. Um, let's just say he's two two, and. He's been hit with Stomp. Stomp's card is uh, damage can be prevented. Falco has one shield counter. Would Falco die? Assuming if Falco is 2 2. Stomp d says that it deals 2 damage, instant, deals 2 damage, and damage can be prevented. Would Falco die with the said uh, 2 damage from Stomp? Or will Falco survive because he still ha uh, because you remove a shield counter? Um, the shield counter will be moved and it will die because um, the shield counter, when we move, prevents the damage. And since Tom says damage can be prevented, it still goes through. He still takes that point of damage. That's correct. So yes, uh, Falco will die, assuming that Falco is 2-2. Uh, even though that uh, Falco still has a shield counter, uh, Falco will be will remove the shield counter, but will still die because damage can't be pre prevented. So even though he has a shield counter, shield counter will not prevent it from dying, but uh, the shield counter will still be removed despite the said uh, prevention itself. Uh, Martin, assuming if Falco is at two two, I do understand that he won't die because of stomp. Uh, I forgot that that example. Sorry. So, <laughs> sorry, uh, assumer. All right. So we have a very unique uh, card, which is Halo Fountain. Uh, this is one way, a uh, very unique way to win the game. So, uh, so the last ability, wherein you tap a total of five mana and the top 15 tap creatures you control, you win the game. That's one unique way to win the game. It's also that we're in the allows the yeah I should use the color professional sorry my apologies though so one good thing uh one scenario we're in when you untap 15 tap creatures so for instance you have um uh, let's say you have arbor elf which allows you to untap a forest so let's say use the um, Temple Garden to tap it for white. And then you have a total of five whites already. You can also untap uh, the Arbor Elf within that untap 15 tap creatures. So you can use the creature that you use to pay for the cost for untapping it at the same time without any problem. So. Here's a good scenario. What happens if this is in play and I mutate it with the following? So I'll give you like a minute or two to read threefold signal. Uh, just look through threefold signal and then I'll show you what will happen. Uh, Nick, yes, I know. Uh, I said I use uh, our. You kind of use that as an example that you use Arbor Elf to untap the Temple Garden. Yeah, uh, the Sins program, that's right. Sorry. So, let's say you have threefold signal in play and you mutate something on Ramos. Let's say if I mutate Apex of Wishes, Iluma, I'll give you a second to be through it. Or if I mutate with Brokos or mutate it with Netroli, Apex of Death, Snapdax, or Vandrock of Ramos with Refold Signal in play, would I have Replicate?
Anyone wants to gather a guess on this one? Threefold signal came out in Nukpena under the commander, and people are trying to break the threefold signal. So let's go with what replicate is. So replicate, you may choose new targets for the copies. A copy of the permanent spell becomes a token. That's Alvin's question. So, in answer to this, it will have replicate since um, default signal is asking for feature uh, for spell that has that's exactly three colors. So yes, he could replicate those creatures itself. Right, uh, question, Vince. Sure. Um, what if the mutate cost was paid? That's what. This is uh, the mutate cost is being paid. So um, what is um, looking by threefold signal is that it exactly has three colors in it. It uh, doesn't specify that the exactly what the cost needs to be paid, but okay. it access it has to be at least have three colors within it. Uh, so in this case, all this apex uh, creatures will have mutate. I mean, will have replicate. Uh, three, if you pay the replicate three, all will have a uh, separate mutate that will be patch on Ramos Dragon's engine. Next question: Can you win with this in play? Salvin. Oh. Ed, you have a question that one, Alvin? Yes, even though that they're all legendary, uh, the beta trigger will still will still apply. But yes, um, even though they are all tokens. But the mutated trigger will still apply since uh, it would come into play on that. Okay, sorry. Okay, I get your point. I uh, yes, you can mutate it all on the same target creature. Um, yes, the legendary rules will state in that. Uh, you would have to choose one to keep, whereas the others would be. Um, here's the thing, uh, Alvin. Depending on the mutate, uh, mutate will not. Depending if you're gonna put the creature card on top or at the bottom. So in the mutate in Ikoria, if you put it at the bottom. It will not be the name of the apex itself, but rather it would still be Ramos. So, for instance, um, this in that scenario. So, if I put all the apex at the bottom of Ramos, it's still Ramos. So, I can still have all the three mutate triggers still apply on Ramon Dragon Engine because. Uh, what it's looking for is not on top. I mean, the legendary will look at the name of the creature, which I totally understand. But since mutate, you choose whether you put the creature on top of the creature or if you put it at the bottom of the creature. So in this type of scenario, if you yeah, mutate the apex at the bottom, putting it at the bottom of Ramos, I will have all the mutate triggers with the replicate, tri uh, replicate copy. 
there so far, Evan? All right. So, question. I attached Luxor Guidus Gift on Sahili Rai. I as I choose her second ability, minus two, and I choose Sahili Rai as a copy. Can I win the game? Hi. Um, this is an interesting thing that I had a discussion with this with, you know, a couple of days back or weeks back. Um, um, unfortunately, no. Because um, the legendary rule will kill off the other one before you could do anything. Uh, that's a good question. That one. Answer. Yeah. The answer would be that uh, you can win. How do you exactly win on this one? Let okay. me just explain. So uh, first, Luxor is equipped to Sahili, right? A minus two Sahili, right? Targeting Sahili, right? Sahili, a new Sahili, right? Comes into play. You choose the token to stay in play. Alter of the Brood triggers, so that would meal my opponent's library. A minus two to Sahili Rai once more to copy herself. Why can I copy Sahili Rai by then? As, uh, Sahili Rai, when attached with Luxure, she becomes a creature. That's the new wording for Luxure's ability. And uh, Sahili allows you to, second ability allows you to create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, and it's an artifact. So, technically speaking, the new Sahili Rai is now an artifact planeswalker. So, yes, you can copy Sahili Rai once more. Verification that one, Dino? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, I, I was thinking, like, I was, I was thinking with this, like, you needed the, what do you call this, you needed, like, infinite mana to also keep on equipping, but yeah, that makes sense. Forgot the no, point that it's also a artifact. The copy is an artifact, so you can copy it. Up. Okay. Yes. Ah, you can okay. do the minus 2 on Sahili right on its own. That's, oh. the combo is sort of, like, infinite in that one. Alright, cool, cool. Thank you, thank you. So, I, I, I glass over the part that it becomes an artifact and you can copy. Thank you, thank you. Uh, problem, oh, sorry, that... pakiulit. Okay, so, kung paano Sure. So, Sahili Rai equipped with Luxure. Minus 2 Sahili Rai. So, Sahili is a creature. Sahili copies itself. Comes into play. The new Sahili is now considered as an artifact placewalker. Then I minus two the new Sahili, discarding, uh, uh, sacrificing the first Sahili, no longer attached to Luxor. You can minus two the new copy of the Sahili and then copy the artifact placewalker. Here, Ron. Copyable value yung ano? Yung artifact ni Sahili. Naging artifact kasi siya. Yes, Mark. You can activate loyalty abilities of opponent, not just a uh, placewalker. Right. So for casualty spells, uh, what happens if I have a sweet artist and I in play and I copy a casualty spell? Uh, will the casualty spell be copied? The answer with that would be yes. So for Aaron. You can target a casualty spell because it's also already in the stack. You don't need to pay for the new casualty spell that's being copied by Aaron Street Artist. For Volvo, what happens if you cast a creature spell that doesn't share creature type that has casualty? So Volvo will still trigger on that one uh, with the said uh, creature that has a casualty that you place a new copy on this. What happens if you have Lithoform Engine? You can also copy the said uh, instant or sorcery spell that has casualty because casualty is already put into the stack. So you don't need to pay the additional casualty spell for it. As well as uh, double major. You can make another copy of the casualty spell. Now, here's a good one that I got this from Game Nights recently. 
So I have Zorn, Captain Landry Spawn, and Jolene in play. So how does this work? So Jolene will put additional treasure. Zorn will put another treasure. So if Jolene and Zorn are only in play, I mean if a treasure will treasure will be created, you'll have a total of three treasures being created. Add Landry Storm to the mix, Landry Storm attacks. Uh, you'll have a total of four treasures being created. In short, you'll have a lot of treasures with all these three out in play. So this would be a nice, interesting scenario. Uh, I'm not so sure if you guys are familiar with this. This is a new cycle within the three Mafia families. Wherein you will exile this card, and the target land will have this ability to add uh, a certain color for the said um, family itself. How does this work? So what happens if I use this ability, the first one, I exiled it, target land gains the ability to add this certain color. The land will still remain or has the ability to add those three colors as long as the card is still in exile or as long as the card has not been cast into, into the battlefield from exile. If the said card was removed from exile, let's say by uh, one of the Zendikar, Ri uh, uh, Zendikar Rising, no, not Zendikar Rising, but rather um gatewatch either one of the cards in the oath of gatewatch were in kind of removed the card from exile the land will still have the ability to tap those three mana still so what happens if the said creature is already in play and somehow it gets exiled let's say a yeah, processor thanks alvin let's say if uh let's say i already cast adjudicator and it was exiled, let's say, due to sealed tournament. Uh, this one, it was exiled by uh, by your silence. If it was exiled, can I recast it once more from exile? The answer in that one will be no. Why? The ability to cast a creature from exile is tied in with the ability when you exile the card to put the land with that ability. So you cannot cast a set card from Excel if it was Excel afterwards, okay? And last but not least, these are just a couple things that I would like to discuss. Uh, some may have um, questions about Urabrask. Uh, Urabrask has the, uh, the beginning of upkeep, you Excel top card. Your opponent will also have their upkeep uh, flip up, but they do not put that into their hand. They need to cast it at that point. Right, boxing ring. So just in case, if uh, this is being played in Commander, for boxing ring, last ability, we're in create a treasure token, activate if you control a creature that fought this turn. A creature needs to survive. In short, you don't get any prize. You need to win the fight to in order to get the prize itself. So please take note that, let's say, if, some, if somehow... Creature A, uh, your creature fights a creature of your opponent, and they both die. You cannot create a treasure from the boxing ring. It needs to survive before you could get the prize. Citizen's crowbar. Somehow I do control the creature of my opponent that is attached to this crowbar. Uh, I cannot sacrifice a citizen's crowbar even though it's still attached to the creature that I controlled it. Okay, so. Some people might think that they might be able to sacrifice it because, number one, you don't own the equipment. Right. Um, with this protection, pro, uh, with this protection gives uh, a name legitimate business person. So when you are required to choose a card name, you cannot choose a legitimate business person even though this witness protection allows to add it on that. Okay, so legitimate business person is not a card name, so you can't name it. One nice note about Evolving Door is that you can sacrifice a creature to search for a, co a certain color or color plus one. So if you sacrifice a colorless or an artifact creature, that will allow you to search for a creature with one color. So any color of the Wurberg. 
if you sacrifice um, a creature with five colors, meaning it has the Woodbird color, yeah. you cannot find a creature that has a total of six colors in Magic. Because right now, that does not exist. <laughs> All right. Uh, floor is open for any questions. Um, need to wrap it up. Sorry. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions for our rules update presenter, Vince Balian, feel free to unmute or use the rules rad chat channel. Post your questions yeah. there. So Joel already posted one question a while ago. It's just an interesting inter uh, cool. question about it. Uh, Mark, wala pang update for purple mana. It does not exist. May pinost no. ako sa chat. Lang wala. Main hall, sorry. <laughs> Main hall ba? Sorry naman, wait. Inlamo na sa main hall? 